Greetings! It is I, Tantus Narvan Chikovan, Lord and Emperor of the Chikovan Empire, and welcome! It's time to continue my discussion on Advanced Dungeons & Dragons, the second edition of AD&D. When I last left off, we were diving into combat deeply, talking about the important things that you as a Dungeon Master will need to know about combat. You as a player might be good to know about them anyway too, just not as important. But let's dive deeper, let's talk a little bit more about resurrecting your characters, raising them from the dead. Now, no amount of curatives or healing magic will raise a character once they've hit zero and die. They're not going to do anything to you. On the other hand, you could always cast a spell such as Raise Dead or Resurrection in order to raise them from the dead. The target would have to make a resurrection roll in order for this resurrection to be successful. This, of course, is going to be based upon their current constitution. And it's a percentile roll where they have to roll equal to or lower than a certain percentile in order to be successfully risen from the dead. If they are, great, they're alive again. Any effects that the spell tells you you are put into are what your character is left off at. Whether whatever hit points that spell lists, anything like that, the spell will tell you the condition the person will be in. There is a universal thing at this point in time. If you are resurrected from the dead, your constitution is permanently lowered by one. So now this means it could change your total hit points. If you were receiving bonus hit points from constitution and your new constitution means those bonus hit points are reduced or removed, then you're losing those. So the change in constitution could change your hit point total. Now it's also important to note if your constitution ever hits zero, you cannot be resurrected, you are gone forever, you cannot be played again, you're just a dead forever character. Now there is an important optional rule I do want to talk about. The Death's Door optional rule. Now if you find your campaign particularly deadly or with a lot of character deaths, a lot of problems with that, then you can implement this rule. Or if you just really want to be nice to your characters, you can too. What Death's Door says is when you hit zero hit points, you're not instantly dead. You have a little time for your friends in order to try to heal you, help you, save you. You have until negative 10. So that means you could go to negative 10 worth of damage. Now, when you hit zero, you're unconscious. You're lying there. You're out cold. You're not able to participate anymore. The thing is, you lose one hit point per turn. So you keep going into those negatives. Of course, if uh, that damage puts you into negative 10 to begin with, if you get some kind of large hit or something like that, you still might die. But regardless, in the condition that you are, if you would literally hit zero, exactly hit zero, then you start losing one hit point per turn until you hit 10 and die. During this time, one of your allies could spend a round basically binding your wounds. This doesn't heal you at all. It stops you from basically taking damage and stops you from dying, but you're still at whatever negative you were last at before they bound you. Now, I can use a cure spell on this person. That's a good way of basically getting them back up. If I use a cure spell on them, regardless of whatever negative they are, they are healed to one hit point. Now, the disadvantage of this is they if I can use any more cure spells on them, that has no effect. They actually have to have a day's worth of rest to recover, and then cure spells will act normally on them once again. They've reached a point in time where they can heal. During this day, though, they are in no condition to fight. They can't fight. They can't cast spells. They frequently need to take stops and rest. And they're sort of like addle-brained and kind of confused, too, so communicating with them be a problem. Now, you can rectify this with a heal spell. If I cast a heal spell on someone... Regardless of whatever hit points it is, it heals them just as normal like the heal spell would say. So they could be at negative 9 and they would heal whatever appropriate to my heal spell would be. It also restores their vitality and their mental condition. It gets them back in working order. So heal spell is powerful enough to recover from those negatives. Now there is another disadvantage of this. This applies not only to dying, but to reaching the death's door. It, because it addle brains me so much, if I'd be a character that would me memorize spells... I lose them. I don't have them anymore. So if I'm like a wizard and I had a bunch of spells, guess what? I don't have them now that I'm back up out of this dying condition. Oops, I lost them all just because my brain got fried from the shock of hitting these low hit point values. Now let's begin to talk about some unique combat situations. 
These are important to discuss because a lot of these are more fantasical than anything. And granted, you could probably encounter one in an actual real world scenario, but some of them are very, they're unique scenarios that aren't going to come up a lot of times for your characters. They're going to be more of heavily fantasy based. Let's talk about, the, more importantly, siege damage. So when you have large groups of people attacking an army, there's of course a siege. When you're breaking into said fortifications, that's when your characters can go mano a mano with the battle with various enemies as this battle is going on in the background. That's what you want to focus on. The actual siege itself, which in reality would be months, possibly even years sometimes, that's boring. You don't want to roleplay that. There's no reason to roleplay that. You want to skip to the parts while your characters are getting some role-playing options or some getting action, because both could very easily apply. You want to hit to the moment when the castle walls are being attempted to be breached, when there's this battle round going at this point in time that your characters are going to jump in. There's the background of the siege or the battle in the background that's actually going on, but it doesn't truly affect your characters. That's just background piece, a setting for your character. Now there's an important table in the book you're going to look to. This table will mention types of siege weapons and types of wall you're hitting. This is giving a save for the wall. The wall will roll a d20. If they meet or beat that number, the wall withstands the attack. If they get lower than that number, the wall has taken damage and it's being breached. Now, you would, of course, repeat this at a certain point in time, whatever kind of rate that you're having, that effectively the wall is being breached for this excitement point in time. So your characters might be fighting in an area while this wall is being breached for armies to get there, or maybe they have to help fight some kind of enemy outside the wall while holding them off long enough for this wall to be breached. For every one less than the target number, than the save number, that the wall is basically rolling, it... It breaks down one cubic foot of the structure. One cubic foot. So if I would be five less, that'd be five cubic feet. That's not a huge hole, but it might end up being one that someone could slip in through, especially a group of heroes if they're taking advantage of the situation, or they could wait for a few attacks to damage an area more, to increase this wall damage. Things like catapults are gonna do a lot more easier, are gonna be a lot easier to do a lot more damage than something like, let's say a ballista. So you're going to have to look to the siege weapon, type of wall, to see what kind of damage you're breaking down, what kind of hole you're forging in there that either your army or your players can get in there. Maybe they have to keep the, like the wall clear or something. You can come up with plenty of storylines to revolve around this, to focus more on your character's individual battles while this background of the wall falling happens. And you're going to use the rolls to see how many turns it's going to take. Perhaps characters have to hold things off for a certain amount of time until the walls have taken a certain amount of damage. That's what you're really going to focus on in this situation like this. So that's it for today. I talked about, of course, resurrecting a character. And I introduced you an optional rule, which actually I like even in 2nd edition, because they did introduce it as a standard in, in later editions, the Death Door rule. And then I began talking about those unusual combat situations, starting with siege damage and a siege of a fortification. In the next episode, I'm going to move on from there and talk about mounted combat and aerial combat. And hopefully, maybe if I have some time, move on to underwater combat next episode, if not the one after that. So if any questions, comments, anything you would say, anything you think I left out, please leave in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. It shows your support of the channel, the empire, the work I do. If you want to show some extra support, you could always check out my Patreon, link in the description below. But regardless, until the next time, I bid you farewell.